Hello, my dear sewing friends. Thank you so much for being here today. And to open up this video, I don't think I have to tell you that t-shirts are great any time of the year. And what makes them even better? That's right, when they're handmade, and that's exactly what we're doing today. This is a quick and easy project, comes together in no time, perfect for the weekend, perfect for any skills, and I'll show you how I draft and how I sew this style of a t-shirt. Besides, once you're done, you will be able to use it for a tunic or a dress or whatever else your heart desires, because I truly believe that if I can do it, then you can do it as well. So, let's get started. Now there's only a couple of measurements that you will need and the first one will be taken from the nape of your neck all the way to your waist. And that is the first measurement that's gonna go on our pattern paper. Once you have that down, go ahead and divide it in two equal parts like you see me do on a screen. Next, you will take your waist measurement and we'll be working with quarter of that. And that quarter of your waist measurement is gonna go on the bottom of your pattern paper right over here. After that, we're going to take your bust circumference and again, we'll be working with just a quarter of that and that quarter of your bust circumference is gonna go right over here. For the top of the pattern, we will need half of your back shoulder width. So not a quarter, but a half of your shoulder width and you measure it from one edge of the shoulder to another edge of the shoulder going through the neck like so. Once you have that measurement, go ahead and put it on top of your pattern right over here. And then let's turn the pattern so that it's easier for us to work further. For the next step, we'll mark the width of your neckline or half of the width of the neckline. And I'm going to take three and a half inches right over here. You can take less, you can take more. The best tip is to take a look at your favorite t-shirt and see what's the half of the width of the neckline there. And then I'm gonna take half an inch up like so. For this next part, you can also grab your favorite t-shirt where you like the length of the sleeve and you will need to take your measuring tape and measure from the neckline all the way to the edge of the shoulder seam and then from shoulder seam all the way to the bottom of the sleeve. And that measurement, what's gonna go on our pattern paper next. And that for me is eight inches. So I will draw a line that is eight inches long starting from this point, going through this point and then as long as it will go. Now for the back neckline, I will drop it about half an inch down from the top and then with a dashed curved line, I will connect the two points and that will be my back neckline. All right, now on to the actual width of the sleeve. Now go ahead and take your ruler and at 90 degree angle, we will just drop a straight line as long as it goes past the bust line. And then for the next step, this is what we're going to do. About one inch above your bust line, we will do a little curve like this. In this pattern making method that I'm using, usually the armhole either sits right at the bust level that we have marked or about one inch higher. The last thing for us to do before we move forward from the sleeve is to make sure that this part right over here is actually wide enough for our arm to go through. For that, go ahead, take your measuring tape and measure your upper arm circumference. And then you need to make sure that this part of the sleeve on your pattern is at least half as wide as your upper arm circumference. Now, if you want your sleeve not to be so tight, then add a little bit extra to this measurement. If you want your sleeve to be on a tighter side or form fitting, then go ahead and leave it as it is. As you can see, my sleeve is just a little bit bigger than my actual upper arm circumference and it works really great. Now, let's talk about the length. I am extending my pattern by three inches since everything that we measured was from waist up. Now, if you want your t-shirt to be longer, tunic length, dress length, whichever way you prefer, just place your measuring tape on your waist and drop it as low as you would like it to be. And for the width of it, I'm going to take a quarter of my hip circumference so that way it goes really nice over the jeans. Now, we will need to connect all these three points to create a side seam. Once I have connected all three points of my side seam, it will give me a lot of angles. So here I am with a dash curved line, connecting it one more time to create a really nice and smooth side seam. 
And here's one last thing before we're ready to cut this pattern out, and that is the shoulder line. Let's talk about it just for a second. I'm going to lower it just by about one eighth of an inch, maybe one quarter of an inch, and then I'm going to curve it in like this, and you see the new line in blue, and that is going to give us a better shape of the shoulder, and then the edge of the actual sleeve is not going to be as pointy, and it's going to sit really nicely on your shoulder. Now go ahead and mark your pattern piece as your back pattern piece and also mark the direction of the greatest stretch. Now here's one more thing to consider before we move on to drafting your front pattern piece which is going to be really easy and then we are going to move on to putting it all together. So as you have noticed I took my actual measurements. I didn't add any positive or negative ease and that is because I want my t-shirt to fit just right not too tight not too loose if you want your t-shirt to be on the looser side you can add positive ease if you want your t-shirt to be tighter you can add negative ease but please be aware that a lot of these things will depend on how stretchy is your fabric now for the front pattern piece, everything is super easy. Once you have cut your back pattern piece, go ahead and grab a new piece of paper, lay down your back pattern piece on it, and then we're going to trace it. We're actually going to copy absolutely everything that you have on the back pattern piece. And after that, we will adjust just two things. Now, first adjustment is going to be about the front neckline. I'm going to lower it by another two and a half inches like so. And then with a dash curved line, I'm going to mark my front neckline. And final adjustment that we're going to do for our front pattern piece is we're going to raise the shoulder by half an inch up and then we're going to draw a new shoulder line. Now if that would have been a woven pattern pattern for a fabric that doesn't stretch, we would need to adjust the actual length of the shoulder seam because by raising it half an inch up, it will actually be different from the back pattern piece. But because we're working with stretch fabric, that will actually be not a problem at all since the difference is about maybe a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit more. And therefore, you can easily stretch your fabric a little bit as you sew so that the shoulder seams match. And that's it. Our front pattern piece is ready. Now, as for the fabric, we're going to be working with stretch fabric. Any knit fabric will do, any t-shirting, jersey will do great for this pattern because this pattern is for a knit fabrics or fabrics with stretch. As I mentioned before, I didn't take any ease, therefore you will need either one-way stretch or two-way stretch. Two-way stretch is preferred, that's when the fabric stretches both directions, horizontally and vertically. So that way, when we're working with a grown-on sleeve, it's easy and comfortable for you to get into the t-shirt and move around. Now, as you know from all of my other tutorials, I do not add any hem or seam allowances on my paper patterns. Therefore, add them now if you'd like to see them on your paper patterns. I add them as I cut my fabric. That's my personal preference. There's a reason for it. Therefore, you do the way it's best for you, but don't forget to add your hem and seam allowances and you will cut one pattern piece for the back, one pattern piece for the front, both on the fold. Two super important mentions right over here. If you have done knit bodice block from one of my previous tutorials, then use knit bodice block template to build this grown on sleeve t-shirt so that way you don't have to do the same work twice. And number two is that if you are a member of this channel, then of course you have instruction sheets for this video tutorial and many others. And if you want to know more about becoming a member of this channel, then I will leave all necessary information for you in the info box below. Now after that is done, go ahead and take your front pattern piece and your back pattern piece, lay them right sides together, pin them at the shoulder seams and the side seams, and for the next step, we're going to sew these seams. Today for this project, I'm using my serger. However, if you don't have a serger, not a big deal. You can use your sewing machine very easily to sew knits. And if you're not sure how, I have a very basic beginner sewing video on how to sew knits with a sewing machine. And it just so happens that in that video, I also show how to make a t-shirt on a sewing machine. I will leave that link for you in the info box below. All right, now that the shoulder seams and the side seams are all done, we only have three things left to do, and all three of them are pretty easy and pretty quick. So we have to finish the neckline, we have to finish the sleeves, and we also have to finish the hem. So let me tell you a little bit about that. So for the neckline, I'm going to use gray cotton ribbing like this one. This one is actually the same fabric as I used 
for the neckline right over here. And you can use the self fabric of the project as well. Not a big deal, not a problem at all. I do that all the time. It's just in this case, it's my personal preference to do a contrasting color on the neck band for this particular t-shirt. Now inserting a neckline is easier than you think. And if you've been afraid to do that till this very moment, I need to tell you this. It really is easy. You just have to know a few key moments and then don't skip the extra steps that you feel that you can bypass because those extra steps usually are what gives you that great impeccable result. Now for the sleeve, I'm actually going to use one of the techniques that I used quite a lot for t-shirts and t-shirt like projects, and that is a rolled cuff. And I actually copied this technique from a ready to wear t-shirt, which was in fact a gift from my mom. So mom, thanks a lot. <laughs> I use it quite a bit, honestly, and I absolutely love the way it looks. And I do think that it adds that extra little detail, an extra little touch to an otherwise simple sewing make, which nothing wrong with that. But once you add a couple of special details it really becomes very very beautiful now this technique is also very simple and anybody can do it and here comes the hem for the hem we have a couple of options now if you're using a sewing machine you can either fold it over and do a zigzag stitch or you can also do it by hand if you're using a serger you can use a flat lock seam which is one of my favorites to use on a serger and you can also use it on your sleeves as well creates a beautiful little edge and then if you do have a cover stitch machine you can also finish it on the cover stitch machine now, I know you're going to ask, Alisa, are you actually going to show us each one of the techniques that you just mentioned? And you bet I will, because I did make a very particular video and tutorial on each one of these techniques, because you all are very different. You might have a sewing machine, you might have a sewing machine and a serger, and somebody might have all three. So your needs are all very different. That way, it's like a sewing constructor. You pick what you need and you apply it to your sewing project. And I made a very specific video playlist right over here which contains all of the tutorials and all of the techniques that I just mentioned so that way it's super convenient for you you don't have to look for it everything is one place and if you need to do a playback you can only do a playback on that particular moment instead of looking through the whole video so I truly try to think of your user experience as well so definitely click right over here and I'll see you on the other side so that way you can finish your beautiful t-shirt together with me thank you so much bye